the small MG midgets have three laps start, while Nouvelari's class with the larger engined MG magnets only get one lap. The Alphas and Invictors are on scratch. Nuvolari is soon way ahead of the rest of his class, but so is a wild, dark Irishman, Hugh Hamilton, on a midget. Before long, it is clear that the Irishman is leading the world-famous Italian by seconds and looks like winning. Nuvolari is still behind when Hamilton comes in for a disastrously slow pit stop. It becomes another national crisis as Nuvolari takes the lead. Nuvolari comes through to win the tourist trophy for the second time. Specialmente per il molto pubblico che assiste a questa gara che sono molto sportivi. This year at Indianapolis, it is reported that there aren't any serious accidents in the race, but it still can't be described as uneventful. Finally, Wild Bill Cummings passes Maury Rose to win by 27 seconds. As usual at Indianapolis, the winning car has a Miller engine, one of the most successful racing engines ever built. In Europe, Grand Prix racing comes back to its former glory with an effective new formula, a 750 kilogram weight limit. Here is a clear-cut challenge to engineering skill. And this contest for international prestige is watched by the crowned heads of Europe. The Tonsalin has a perfected Maserati 8. Chiron, an improved P3 Alfa Romeo. The 3.3 Bugatti is a new design and one of the most beautiful racing cars ever built. Chiron is way ahead on the Alpha, and it looks an easy win. But on the last lap, he makes one of his rare mistakes. It is another of the new Alphas that crosses the line with a brilliant young driver from Algeria, Guy Moll. This long supremacy of Italian cars is at last to be challenged on the Arvus in Berlin by rear-engined auto unions, the first new racing cars of the Third Reich. The revolutionary silver cars, weighing well under a ton, have engines producing nearly 300 horsepower, and von Stuck is leaving the Alphas behind. The new German cars have streamlined bodies. The lessons of von Braukic's win two years ago have been noted. Somewhere behind von Stuck, there's a single streamlined Alpha driven by Guy Moll. The auto unions are coming into the pits. Guy Moll takes the lead. The tremendous power of the auto unions is hard on the rear tires now that the road is drying. The race becomes a triumph for Guy Moll on the streamlined Alpha. Bazzi is second, while in fourth place and almost unnoticed and most gallant of all is Nuvolari, who has driven the race with a broken leg in plaster. Alphas have won this round. But five weeks later in the French Grand Prix, the finest cars of France and Italy are to meet a double challenge from the new Germany. Besides the auto unions, team manager Neubauer is here with three Mercedes. Their engines have over 300 horsepower and all four wheels are sprung independently. With them are experts on tires, fuel and carburation.
These cars are being driven by Fagioli, the winner of the last Italian Grand Prix. Von Braukic, the victor at Avis. And Caracciola, the greatest German driver of all time. In practice, both German and Italian cars break the lap record by three seconds, then by four, then six, seven, eleven, twelve, and finally by over 13 seconds. The Italian and French cars have work support, but no one has ever gone racing before with an organization as large or as thorough as this. A record crowd of 80,000 is arriving. The race is to be 300 miles long, and at least one man is prepared to eat it through. This is the first Mercedes team to visit France since 1914, and the prestige of Hitler's Germany is at stake. Chiron's Alpha come up from the third row. Graciola's Mercedes is now in front, Chiron is second. It's Chiron. Graciola is second. The incredible Chiron is drawing away from the Mercedes. What can Neubauer be thinking? Chiron's Alpha still leads as von Stuck on an auto union moves up into second place for a new German attack. With a lap record of over 90, the German auto union goes into the lead for the Third Reich. Most impressive of all is the road holding of the German cars and the way they seem to float over the concrete surface. All other cars appear obsolete as they bounce and bucket along. But all isn't well with the new cars. Von Braukic's Mercedes is slowing with supercharger trouble. Another Mercedes is coming in. It's Caracciola. A near side tire is smooth. And look how narrow the brake drums are for such a fast and powerful car. Chiron is again in the lead, but now Fagioli's Mercedes is right on his tail. Chiron goes faster than ever and sets another lap record, while Fagioli finds those brakes fading. The auto unions are also having trouble. And Vazzi brings another Alpha into second place. The German attack is broken. The race is another demonstration of Alfa Romeo invincibility, with Vazzi and Gaimol in second and third place. The French crowd are delighted, for the leader wears the blue of France, their Louis Chiron. Louis Chiron's greatest victory is the peak of Alfa Romeo fortune. But this is the last time for many years that any car will outperform the new Mercedes and auto unions. 